to get out our pencils and paper and make histograms with our data, okay? So take out your pencils and paper, and then we're gonna open up our class data. And I emailed you the link to this twice today because I accidentally sent you the wrong one <laughs> from last semester to look at the one that you do have access to, which is called class data, where we have all of our names entered and our majors, our emails, and we already put our ages in here. <laughs> Great, everyone's there. What we're gonna do is say, all right, well, we've got, we've got a data range of 18 to 36. That's about 18, oh. right? So we gotta go from 18 to 36. And if we put these data all on, if we want to put these data all on our, I'm going to draw, that doesn't draw. Oh, I can draw a line here. So you're going to draw this out on your paper too, okay? You're going to draw your x-axis. And we're going to have, I think I need some numbers, I need some numbers here. We're going to go from 18. How about, how about we'll put them in bins from, let's see, we've got 18, if we put them in like six bins from like, with like three in each, bin one, be like 18 to 18, 19, 20, and bin two will be like 21, 22, 23, bin three, uh, 24, 25, 26, bin four, 27, 28, 29, bin five, 30, 31, 32, bin six, and that'll be 33, 34, 35. Let's just, yeah, go to 35. And then we'll have like a bin seven, that'll just be the 36 plus. <laughs> you put me in there, it would look, look the same actually then, um, or almost, almost. So then what do we have to do here? We have to say, well, how many people, how many student ages land in each bin, right? So if I come back here and I start editing this, so that's those are the bin ranges, and then the number of students in each bin. Whoa. Make my box bigger for me, please. Yeah, make it bigger. I want to keep writing stuff. All right, so how many students are in each bin from 18 to 20? You just count them. It's like not even math. It's so easy. We count them. 18 to 20, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We have 15 students between the ages of 18 and 20. Um, <laughs> I think we're gonna have some skewed data here. And then how many between 21 and 23? So we've got one, two, 21 year olds, and three, four, five. We've got five students between these ages, between the ages of 21 and 23. And then between the ages of 24 and 26, we just have one. Right? We've just got one student between the ages of 24 and 26. And between the ages of 27 and 29, we actually have no students. We have zero. Who, who can see this taking shape? From 30 to 32, we have one student. And then from 33 to 35, we have one student. And from and then 36, then 36, we have one student. Right? So if we want to make a histogram of that, now I've got all the data on there. That's all, that's all we have to do. We just have to summarize it like that. We know that the, the y-axis has to be 15 high, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Again, that's our 15. And these are right twos. I'm just going to put the, I'm just going to put the um, first number instead of all the numbers. I'm just gonna say 18, super hard to make an eight. It goes up to, wait. And I'm gonna use this little shape drawer here. Aha, uh -huh. technology. Ah, that looks better, right? Okay. <laughs> Can you tell it's my first time using a whiteboard? 
I could also use a little text thing here. All right, and then that goes up to 21 is the next, the next break in the bins, right? And then we had five. So that goes up to about here, was it? Can't see because there's a weird thing in the way. Go away. Should be a little shorter. This is probably easier to do on paper. Okay, and then our next break was 24. And that one only had one in it. So it's gonna be half the size here. You can make yours slightly different. You can make yours slightly different. This is how mine's gonna look. And the next one had, uh, let's see, it was 24, then it was goes to 27. And the box has zero. This is nothing. And then so we'll go back to 30. And that we just had one again. We can just copy and paste that and just put another one right here in this bin. So this bin is, this represents one student. Still too tall. Should be actually shorter because this is two here. Should be like half the size. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's better. Okay. And then again, we have the next bin over here is 33 to 35. And we just had one student and then we're gonna have 36 and up. And we're gonna have one student there too. So if I copy and paste that, oops. Oh, it didn't let me do that as easily as I want. Oh, because it's not in this mode. I'll just draw another one. Let's see, where were we? Okay, this is the one that's blank. And then we've got one, two that, another two that have here. Okay, am I, did I get that somewhat like that? Yours probably looks better than mine, <laughs> right? Something like that. Do we have a normal distribution? No, no, I don't think we need to do a statistical analysis of this to try to determine if we were to if we were to draw a, a rough line showing the shape of this curve like this, we could see that what we have here is a right skewed distribution. Right skewed. Oh my gosh, it's really hard to make S's. It's you. <laughs> I'm going to pretend my actual handwriting is better. So there you go. We made a histogram of our class data. Cool, right? Easy. Now we all understand what histograms are. We're distributing the data into bins based on these breaks in the data that we decide what the break should be. And we say how many points, how many data points, how many students' ages fall in here? How many fall in this bin? How many fall in this bin? And this is the distribution that shows us the shape of the distribution and the spread of the distribution. Now, the mean of the data would probably not very well represent these data. Let's look at um, calculating the median and let's make some box plots of the same data. Our data, if we were going to put them all in a line, in a row, right? We could say we have 18, 18, 19, right? We have two 18 year olds. We have, wait, one, two, three, four, five 19 year olds. One, two, three, four, five 19 year olds. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight 20 year olds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight 20 year olds. Awesome. <laughs> and then we've also got two 21 year olds. 21, 21, 
And then we have one 22 year old, two 23 year olds, a 30 year old, a 35 year old, and a 36 year old. All right. I wonder if I can. All right. Let me make this a little wider. So get everybody out there. Everybody's oh, there's, here, right? There's one 24 year old. Oh, did I? Where? It wasn't in the data sheet. There's one 24 year old. Let's. Who's 24? I'm like, it what doesn't exist. Who who's 24? Is it um Noe? Noelle? Uh no, it is Jessleen. How did I miss that? Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. How did I miss that? I think I missed uh okay. Yeah, I got it on the other data. Somehow I just missed it when I was copying it over. Good, good. Thanks for my pointing that out. Okay, so we have one. So what's the median here? We're going to find the median. How are we going to find the median? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. We're just going to say how many data points do we have here? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We have 24 students. That's an even number. So we gotta go, we gotta go to the middle two, right? We start back over here. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? I'm just gonna make that a bold. And then if we went back from the other way, then this other 20 year old is also, these are the two, the two middle numbers. And if we take the average of those two middle numbers, that's the median, which is very handy, simply also 20. So capital M for median equals 20, right? This is that center line of the box plot right there. That's our median. Right, I'm gonna make that a nice bold line. Okay, so we can see that's the median. And then our, what's our, our first quartile? Now we gotta go halfway between 18 and 20, right? We had 12 there, so we gotta go six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So here's our, our other box line between these two 19s. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make a box. I'm going to use my box. I got a box. I'm going to make a box. And that box is going to start there. And then it's going to go over to the other side, the other quartile. It's going to be six over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be right here. It's going to be right here. So this, this is our median in the middle. And then what's this guy over here called? This is our Q1, right? And then over here, this is our Q3, right? So our Q1 is equal to what? It's equal to 19, right? Our Q3 is equal to... 22.5, I think, right? Am I right? If somebody correct yeah. me if I'm wrong there. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, because it's the average of 22 and 23 is going to be our Q3. So that's 22.5, right? Right. Okay, I'm going to put this little box down here. Say like, yeah, this is our median. Our median, our Q1, our Q3, and then we're going to have our lines coming out here to our minimum and our, our maximum and our minimum. And look at that. We just drew a box plot. Now, should we just check and see if our minimum and maximum make sense with the interquartile range, right? So what is it again? IQR. What's our IQR? Our IQR interquartile range is equal to um, was it 
22.5 minus 19, right? What is that? That's um, 3.5. So our interquartile range is 3.5. Our minimum, technically like box plot minimum, is 1.5 times 3.5. All right, so it would be an outlier if it's 5.25 or Q3. So plus 22.5, right? So 5.25 plus 22.5. Oops. 5.25 plus 22.5 is 33. Okay, okay, actually, yeah. Yeah, so technically we got some outliers going on here, you guys. Yeah, okay. And professor, uh, yeah. we actually calculated um, the outlier would actually be 27.75. Oh yeah, you're right, yeah. I did it wrong. Okay, no, that's good, 27.75, thank you. See, I, know, I always, I make mistakes and I'm like, is anybody paying attention? Okay, good, so then actually we've got deeper, deeper outliers. So this line has to go a little bit more here and then we have three outliers we have three outlier people which really that. isn't surprising given that our data are really really skewed thank you thank you for correcting basic math and then 19.5.25 is that 13.75 yep. yep okay i got that right okay so we, do we have any values that are 13.75 or lower no so we have no outliers on that side. We have outliers on this side. And so the, the purpose of doing this exercise is because you are you, right? You know you. You can look around and you can see you and your other classmates. So like when we talk about data, it's also abstract. But when you can talk about it in terms of who you are, it helps you to kind of grab onto it. And like, oh, you can see like our data are super skewed. What does super skewed data look like if you put them on a histogram? They look like this. What do they look like if you put them on a box plot? They look like this. So the next time you see a histogram that looks like this, you're going to be like, oh, yeah. That's like our class data where we had a lot of young people and just a couple people who are older that like were just, you know, outliers compared to the rest of the class. 30 is an outlier for this class. And, and this is what the box plot would look like like way over there. Now it's interesting that we still have a pretty symmetrical um, box here. Like sometimes this median can be like way over to one side or the other. It's still a pretty symmetrical box, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And yeah, so still, it's still pretty symmetrical, but we do have these strong outliers. Looks like we have a question. Yeah. Uh, are the three outliers? 5.25, and 13.75? Uh, no. So but I couldn't hear the question. Yeah, um, I think I could cover this one. Um, so the outliers are going to be any of the data points that are above um, uh, the, what was it, the 27.75. Okay. So those three are the 30 the 35 and the 36, yeah. Right, yeah, so you you take the interquartile range, that's the, dif the distance between this line on the box plot and this line on the box plot. So the difference between 22.5 and 19, which was 3.5, right? And you multiply that by 1.5. That's just the standard rule. So you take 1.5 times that, 3.5 interquartile range, and that gives you 5.25. And then you say, okay, 5.25 plus, plus our Q, I'm oh, sorry, plus Q3, plus Q3, 22.5 is 27.75. So this would be our, this would be our minimum. This would be our expected minimum. And then for our lower outliers, you would say take 19, which is Q1, minus that 5.25, and that's equal to 13.75. And we don't have any numbers that low. So the actual minimum is the minimum. 
here the actual maximum is not the same as the calculated mac maximum of IQR times 1.5. Is that making sense? Yeah. Yeah. And we have another question. Yeah. yeah. Is it normal to draw the box plot to scale all with like your graphing paper or just with the, you know what I mean? This is, right now you drew it to scale in line with all the numbers, but it's not technically to scale to scale it's not always drawn like that because you know you know don't, don't normally have like all your numbers like lined up in a row and right. you know it's it could be like quite different than that this was just to give you like a general idea Got it. right this is just to give you a general idea of like how how to find these numbers how to find these numbers if you want i can show you what it looks like in r to do that and so you can see r breaks them into different bins than what we chose and you can like set this but it chose to go from like 15 to 20, 20 to 25. But the general shape of the distribution is pretty similar. And then if you wanted to make a box plot of it, you would just say box plot, um, ages. And it's actually gonna look like that. So yeah, it's gonna be like putting, you know, all the 20s in the 20s, right? So I'll be, you know what, let's, let's even look at it where you can see the, um, where you can see the data points. Uh, I'm gonna go over to chat GPT to help me write the code because I don't remember how to do it. I did this before a while ago. This is how I do most of my coding. I just go over to chat GPT. I'm gonna say, here's our data. And I'm gonna say in R, make, make a box plot with, the term here is jitter to show the data points. And then we read it and it's like, okay. Do 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 gg plot two our norm da 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 okay but it didn't oh, okay use these data. Did I forget to give it these data? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't give it the right, I didn't give it the data. It's like, oh yeah, okay, thank you. <laughs> now it'll do it. Um, let's see if that works. I'm gonna copy the code, copy code. So I don't know if in your other classes you have been told not to use AI, but that's um, not how we do it here. We're gonna use AI. So we're gonna load this library, ggplot2, and then we're gonna, I'm just gonna run this code and see if it works. Da oh yeah, it does. There you go. So here's how it would look if you were gonna do it in R. Um, and actually show all the data points as well. So like, here's all the 20 year olds like stacked up right there on the median. Um, here's our, our three outliers. We got that right, <laughs> right? And then here's some points here too that are kind of like way out here, but most people fall right in here. And you can kind of see again that there's, there's some really skewed data. So when you're looking at the box plot, it can often tell you if the data is skewed just like the histogram does. Does that help answer your question? Yes. Yeah, and I'll I'll send you this code. I'll send you this code if you want me to. It's everything that's blue is actually the box plot. Everything that's blue here, these three dots are our three outlier points. Whereas these all the red points are the actual data points. And what it did with the jitter is it kind of just moved them around a little bit. So they're not stacked all on top of each other. And you can see that there's a bunch of them, right? It just randomly sh shifted them left and right. Um, but yeah, the blue, this is just the the box plot. If we did, again, if we looked at just the box plot of ages, it looks like that, right? And those are those three blue points. You see? Yeah. Okay, cool. And you see how I did that, right? So now you know how to do everything in R. 